Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray that you speak to us, O oh God. Lord, give us a spirit of understanding and revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we believe. God is good. And all the time. And that is his nature. And today, as I stand here, I'm a witness of the goodness of God. So Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were abiding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to lay over us? Yes, they understood the vision. Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Last week we talked about having a vision. Try to have an understanding of what the vision is and the importance of the vision. And I hope by now you are convinced that it is important to have one because Proverbs 29 and verse 18 reminds us that where there is no vision, people perish. And I want you to remember that when you have a vision, because you have a purpose and direction for your life, you will have many people who are jealous of you, many people who will discourage you, many people who will hate you for no apparent reason, for a simple reason that you know where you are going. And misery is looking for company. And I pray that in Jesus' name, you are not going to be the company. I don't want to be, account to be the company of misery. And today, as we look at the word of God, we are concentrating our efforts because this, as we understand the vision, as we think of the importance of having the vision, then what is it? Why then are so many people not successful in whatever God has called them to do? Is it God who is a liar? Or what is happening? And that's the question that I want us to address today. Is it enough to have a vision and drop it? Is it enough to say I saw? No, it's not. And today I want to take us through the stages of developing or growing a vision. Because there are stages, you know, we must progress. It is a journey of life, and we must progress in the journey of life from the point that we see it to the point of actualizing it. And in the stages, there are many people who drop on their wayside. And today we are looking at the story of a great man, a young man, at this point that I, I'm reading Genesis chapter 37. Joseph had a dream. A dream, a vision is used interchangeably, please. So don't get lost, don't get confused. And because Joseph had a dream, at this particular time he was 17 years old. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you have no excuse. Because some of us are saying we are too old. So when we ask the young people the path of their career, may they not say that they don't know because they ought to know. Do you know the reason why? Because God has put the vision that he has for each and every one of us in our hearts. But have we asked God to reveal it? No, because we are busy copying one another. We are busy listening to others. We are busy saying this is what we need to get into and everybody flocks there. Have you ever tried to start a business somewhere on the wayside and you start with one kiosk? Before you know it, how many are they? And you realize the only person who had a vision for that was the first one. The others, they are what we call copycats. You don't want, and I don't want to be a copycat. I want to be an original. I want to have the original design. I want to live a life doing that which God ordained for me. Because how sad it is 
When we get to heaven and you are told you are not meant to do that, you are meant to do this. And you are like, what went wrong? And the Lord says, you just didn't ask. It was always in you. It was always in you. But you never ask because always we think that the glass is greener on the other. Turn to your neighbor and remind them yet again that you have it in you. Don't look for it far. You have it in you. But take time to go before God and say, reveal it. Because it's here, reveal it to me. Reveal it to me. Here, this man, Joseph, had a vision. And not only twice, this vision showed. And at age 17, God showed him. Imagine that people will bow before you. Meaning, you are going to have a position of authority. You are going to be a ruler somewhere. And people will be bowing before before you, at age 17, really, under normal circumstances, somebody would have asked him, are you crazy? What have you been taking of late? Because you haven't even finished school. You don't have a university degree. You don't have this and the other. Remember all those things that we talk about, you know? And even when, that's why when he told the brothers, and they understood what he meant because you can see, they said, do you intend? What intentions do you have, you? Do you intend to reign over us? And who do you think you are? And may I remind us, he was among the youngest. There were many of them, there were 12, 12 of them who were older than him. And here he is saying, thy soul, you us, you us, you know, you. So what do you mean? Me. So me, I'm going to be your slave, eh? And you think you are so good. And then, he didn't stop there. The second dream that he had, still showing him the same thing, that God is elevating him to a position of authority. Then he went, he told his father, and probably because the other time he told the brothers and the brothers were kind of ridiculing him and it was, yeah, right. Let's see how this dreamer will come, this thing will come to pass. So he said, no, I don't want to get there. Let me talk to my, let me see whether my dad, and because he knew that he loves me, dad will understand this. So he went to tell dad and dad was like, read verse nine of that chapter. <laughs> Joseph, get serious. I get alive. Do you want to tell me, me and your mother will bow before you? Yeah, that's a father now encouraging a son. But that's a father who had no vision. When you have a vision for your children, you will be able to tap into it and encourage them. But imagine he was like, you want to tell me, 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 your father. Do you know who you are talking to? Instead of uh, getting excited and encouraging him and telling him, yes, you can do it. And I pray that God will keep me alive that I see you getting there. And I will give you whatever it takes. But when you don't have a vision, you destroy. Hello? When you don't have a vision... You destroy those ones who have visions. And so, but they, you know, they, they, at the end of it, this is what it says. But his father, listen to this. After all of that, his father kept the matter in mind. Yeah, let's wait and see, yeah. Let's wait. Let us wait and see. I don't know what is going to come out of this, but let's wait and... But be careful, you young man. I think you are treading on the wrong grounds. But let's wait and... Let's wait and see. But we see a man who had a vision and never lost it from age 17 to the time that we will look at and see when it came to fruition, when... He had a dream. He, he, he interpreted the dream. Number one, 
stage, the first stage, the first stage. I want to share four stages, and that will be good enough for us to run with. A is see it. We need to see it because really, how do we talk about something we haven't seen? How do you say I'm going somewhere and I don't know where I'm going? I got to see it so that I'll be able to know where I am going. And so he saw it. At age 17, he saw it. What have you seen about your life? What have you seen? What have you seen? We see many things. And we wait for people to come and see for us. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, this is personal, see it yourself. Because that's where we are going wrong. We are running from church to church to church to church so that we can be given a prophecy and be told, I see, you know, I see. My dear, the Lord wants to reveal to you. Hello? The Lord wants to reveal? Yes. But are we in a position where we are telling God, here I am, show me, reveal it, let me see it. Or we are quick to think God can only speak to Joyce, God can only reveal to Joyce. If God is revealing to Joyce, he is the same God who can reveal to you. This is personal. This is personal. You know, the vision for Joseph was not revealed to the father. Nor was it revealed to the brothers. It was revealed to him. Because this is God saying, this is what I want you to do. And I'll carry you through it. So you better see it. So that you can have a stand for God. So that you have a purpose for your life. That you are not going to be copying what everybody else is doing. But you know and know even when people don't understand. Even when people discourage you. You will know without a shadow of doubt. This is what the Lord wants of me. It is important to see it. It is important to see it. And in seeing, as you see it, under the seeing, one of the other things that we got to do is we got to believe it. It's not enough to see it. What good is it if I see it and I don't? And I don't believe. Because what is going to fuel what I have seen is having faith, believing that this one is from God and this God who has started a good work in me this day will take it to a complete in Jesus' name. So you must be able to believe. So seeing alone is not enough. In seeing, you see and you believe. That's what Joseph did. That is why he was not deterred. Even when the brothers ridiculed him, even when the father told him, you want to tell me, me and your mother. At that particular point, you'd have probably given up and say, this thing is going to get me in trouble. But one thing that David did, he knew of a greater God. And he knew of the great vision that this great God had for him. And therefore, he never argued. He did not put an argument. He just folded his hands and waited upon the Lord. He saw and he believed what God revealed to him. Number two, not only do you need to see and believe, he wrote it down. I'm sure if you look at the story of Joseph from where he started, he must have written it down somewhere. And the reason why we write versions down is for memory, is for remembrance. That is why if you open our strategic plan or open this bulletin, hello? D do you have a bulletin? Do you see the version of St. Francis? Do you know why it is written? Why do you think we write it there? Why do you think we write it there? We write it there because it's a constant reminder of where we are going. And every one of us, 
When we are lulling you, we lull you behind that vision. And it doesn't come alone, it comes with a mission. And we write the mission. And I said here last week, a vision answers the question of what, and the vision answers what, and the mission answers how do we get there. And therefore it is important, it's important for us to write it down. Otherwise we won't even remember. We won't. There are many things that we hear with our ears. And like preaching, we hear. And uh, when somebody asks you when you get out of the door, uh, you know, what was the message? Hey, today, Vika, he had to preach. How? What did, he, what did she say? Well, she really ministered. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't blame you. You are human. I am human. We can't remember everything, isn't it? And so it is important, even when you are coming to church, come with a notebook. You hear something important, write it down. Because this information, it is yours, it is mine, it is transformative. And it cannot transform us unless we write it down somewhere for reference. We can go back to it over and over again. That is why we who are teachers, we tell the students, write notes. So that you read, you go back and do what? You go back and read. You go back and read. It is important. Habakkuk. I'm a Habakkuk. Depending on which part of the world you went to school. <laughs> this is what he says. Lie down the vision and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the vision is for appointed time. It speaks to the end and we are not proof false. Though it tarries, wait for it. It will surely come to pass and we will not delay. Write it down. Write it down. Even John the Levelator at the island of Portmos, where he was jailed, he was told, write this vision down. The message to the churches, write it down. Imagine if this Bible was not written, what would happen to us? It is always important to write the vision down. So you see it. And under seeing, you must believe that which you are seeing. And then you take it a notch higher, write it, write it down. So that even as you pray, you tell God, this is what you said. And no matter how tough the going is, and you read the story of Joseph, he went through hell. Right from that point, he was sold into slavery by his brothers. And they saw him coming at a distance and said, look at the dreamer. Look at him. And they plotted and they did it. You know, from a son who was loved by the father, you know, who was spoiled, given everything, served by servants to a slave. Hello? And I want to tell you this. It does not matter what you are going through. When you have a vision, no situation... Oh, no one can suppress it unless you allow them. Unless you allow them. Because it is in you. It is in you. And it is between you and your God. And this God will bring it to pass. Yes, they sold him and they called him a dreamer. They sold him to slavery. But what they didn't know is he went with a dream. Hello? He went with what? Them they thought we have gotten laid on him. And so everything has gone down. Boy, were they wrong. Because he went with a dream. So it doesn't matter. We see him being put in chains. But that did not deter the vision. He still had the vision even in where? Even in prison. So my brothers, I want to encourage you, write it down. Write it down. That is what carried Joseph through. Number three, say it.
communicate it. Talk to somebody about it. Do not worry. Let me tell you, when that time comes for talking about it, Joseph told the brothers. Joseph also told the father. How they are going to respond to it, that's their own problem. But as you speak, it gives you confidence of what you have seen. Not only does it give you confidence, when you speak over something, it gives you commitment. Because I have told Vika, because I have told this and that, because I have told my spouse, because I have told my parents, I am committed to see it to the very end. So it gives you confidence, it gives you commitment. So it is always important to talk about it. Let people know that you are not just waiting for every wave of doctrine that is coming and everything that is the newest thing in town. You know, a new phone you want to buy, a new something. Everything that you hear of, even now. Many are asking, where can we do this? Where is the breakthrough now with the economy the way it is? I want to tell you, when you have a vision like we were reminded, you know where to take your resources. And so, when you are talking about it, somebody will be taking you this direction and say, nah, ah, ah, ah. no, me, I know where I am. Me, I know where I'm going, and I know what I'm doing with my life. And as you talk to them, some will come and tell you, by the way, I have known so many people who wanted to do this. And do you know none of them has made it? Remember to tell them, by the way, I'm not them. Me, I know where God is taking. God is taking me. So, keep on talking about it. Keep on talking. Parents, keep on talking to your children about the vision you have in life. So that even when you are not there, they'll be able to continue with your legacy. But when you don't talk, people will be asking, by the way, Walikuwa nanani siku ya musho? Eh, hey, haven't you heard people ask, what did they say? What was the last word? Eh, hey? people are learning to hear when somebody is in the ICU and then they are at that point and the doctors have said, ah, hapa. People will stay there, even those ones who don't come to see you, they will stay there 24 hours. So that they can hear the last word. That is magic. You know, when you have shared yourself and you have shared your vision with your family, they don't have to learn and surround you where you are so that they, you can say, they say, by the way, I think they whispered. Come on now, even some people lie. You know, I was there. I was the first one there. At this time, I was there. What were you doing there? May the good Lord help us. If the vision is known, people don't have to struggle with your going. Because may I remind us, in this church as I stand here, going we are? Tell your neighbor that. Going we are what? We are going. The only thing is we don't know when. And because, <laughs> because we are going, let's prepare well. Share our vision with those ones who matter with those ones who will carry on. That is why Asians are able to keep business. Black people, we are always hiding ourselves. Mipango hapa, mipango pale. You are even worried what is will happen when you die. They start chomoaring you. And they come with a package. Mm. Unknown packages. <laughs> is that your vision? If that is your vision to extend your territory, please share it with the ones who are allowed you. That you have extended your territory. So that even when you close, they don't have to worry. They don't have to get surprises. That somebody somewhere... Or some people, because sometimes it's not even somebody, some people. Hallelujah. We are Christians on our way to heaven. Those ones are not in St. Francis. <laughs> Share your vision. 
share your vision. If you have resources, tell them I have resources, and this is what I would want us to use these resources for. And because of not sharing, that is why people are dying and children are misusing the resources. Because they don't know, you never allowed us to use, so I will drive the latest. Young people, share your vision with your parents so that they can be able to support you. Don't keep on murmuring and complaining. Sometimes, you know, when we know where you are going, we will be able to support you. But telling me I don't understand, you know, mom, mom, you don't understand. Yeah, right. I don't understand I'm not in your head. It's as simple as that. But if you can speak it out and let me know, then I will know how to support you and how to journey with you. Hello? May the good Lord help us. Say it. Tell your neighbor, say it. Yes. And the last one is number four. Put your faith into action. That is the action place, implementation, actualizing the vision. And you can see the journey that he has taken to actualize. This will happen in chapter 41, the passage that we have read. And this is what the passage says, that the king had a dream. Pharaoh had a dream. And it's a dream which could not be interpreted by anyone else. His magicians did not have the capacity to do it. And the cupbearer remembered that when he was in prison, remember Joseph was put in prison because he was accused forcefully by Potiphar's wife. And here we are. In prison, God gave him favor because he, he still had his vision. The Bible says he continued to do well because the Lord was with him, even in prison. You are not going to lose it. So here, the Bible says, Pharaoh sent for him. And so Joseph, all of a sudden, I'm reading verse 14 of chapter 41. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. Imagine. Did you hear that word? He was brought from? He was brought from? Remember, he's still calling the vision. Hello? It doesn't matter where you are. Tell your neighbor, it doesn't matter where you are. You still have the vision. You have it. It doesn't matter. From the dungeon. He was called from the dungeon. And he came. And when he had shaved, change now is taking place. Hallelujah. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, and he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, and I had a dream, and no one could interpret it, but I heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I love verse 16. Joseph said, I cannot do it. Oh my God, I cannot do it. Because even as we implement the dreams, credit is unto Jehovah. He said, I cannot do it. Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God, my God, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell them, it's all about God. It's all about God. A lot of times God takes us to the very end as we see the implementation and then we forget that it is God who has brought us this far and we start showing off. Come and see what I have. Come and see what I have. Come and see what I have done. Come and see what I have done. 
Pride comes before. And remember also the Bible says God will not share his glory with anyone. And so instead of saying come and see what I have done. How about saying come and see what the Lord has done for me. Buona yesu asifiwe. We give God the glory. This man would have taken credit. He would have said, yes, I'm very good at it, by the way. You know, even when the Wakab Beala was in prison, and have you talked to people and they start telling you the story? Even when the Wakab Beala was in prison, by the way, I did it. I did it. Even this one, I'm good at it. I'm very good at it. Yeah, I have done many more. Eh? But he didn't do that. In the implementation, actualization is always important because if we don't acknowledge God, then it shall not come to pass. We'll get at the door and we ask ourselves what went wrong because it looked like all of it was coming together. But if we don't bring God into the picture, it can't hold together. It can't. And so he interpreted the dream. Guess what? The rest is history. He became the second in command. Hello? That is how God works. But he did not get the second in command in a day. Are we together? So he had to go through refinement. The process of refinement. That's why he was in prison. That's why he went through the challenges. That's why he had to be separated from his brothers and his father. So that God can actualize what he had for Joseph. And all these others were deterrents. So refinement is not bad for you. Especially when God is in it. It's not bad. Because God will give you the grace to bear. He endured imprisonment for something that he did not do. But he wasn't bitter even in prison. He served well and he was made in charge. So it doesn't matter. Keep God and keep your focus. So as I conclude, there are four things, five things that um, are required to actualize implementation. Five things that are required to actualize implementation. Number one is courage. Courage. We need courage. Imagine the kind of things that Joseph went through. We need courage. Now he is in front of a king, and he knows if he does not do this right, what, is God, what awaits him is death. But because he knew God, and he knew what he was carrying, and he knew that the purposes of God in his life will be actualized, he had the courage to say, yes, it is okay, but I know my God will reveal it. I know. It takes courage to say yes. It takes courage to push on. When there are so many obstructions, it takes courage to examine ourselves and totally depend on God, it takes a lot of courage to see it. It took a lot of courage to say we are going to put up children's center. Don't go far. How many of us know we are putting up children's center of excellence? Are you aware? Are you aware? Did you know that is an actualization of a vision? Did you know that? Hi, did you know that? It took a lot of courage. It took a lot of courage within the time set during COVID and all of it and all of it. But the vision, we knew what God wanted and we also knew the ability of God. Number two, discipline. There's no implementation without discipline. Get the excess baggage. Remove the excess baggage. Remove it. Be disciplined. Don't compromise. Joseph refused to compromise. You know when you have a vision and when you know where you are going, the devil is not happy. So he is going to come and try to cut, to help you to cut corners. 
but it is important that we have what we call self what? Self-discipline. Imagine he was so disciplined that he was able to forgive his brothers for what they had done. He said, you know what? It's not about you. It is God who sent me here before you so that at a time such as this, I'll be able to save your lives. Imagine self-discipline. He didn't pay evil for evil. He paid evil with good. It takes a lot of self-discipline. Number two. Number three is support. We need support from teams. Joseph did not work alone. If you read chapter 42 and chapter, now the implementation of all of that, he worked with people. He worked with people. He was supported by Pharaoh. He was supported by in jail. He was supported by the king. And he was given everything that he needed. And ultimately, chapter 45, he was supported by his family. 46, his father even came and joined him. He was supported. We need to have people who can support us. We cannot make it alone. Yes, the vision is ours, we have it, but we need support from others. And number four, time. Time. Actualization of a, of a vision takes time. It's not a one-day affair. It's not a one-year affair. Sometimes it's a lifetime affair. It takes time. So understanding the season and the time that you are in and what is needed for that season and time is very, very key. And the last one, number five. Implementation requires planning. And we talked last week about strategic planning. What do we plan? You can see Joseph writing the goals down. He talked about short-term goals and long-term goals, what they need to do. And number two, he also didn't talk about the goals without talking about the resources and how they are going to gather the resources. And by the end of all, it all, after being able to identify all the resources needed, he was now able to gather the resources. And let me tell you, by the end of it all, Egyptians didn't die of hunger. They even fed the surrounding nations. And this, this was a journey of 14 years. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. As we live this life, we live a purposeful life. May the Lord help us to be visionary in everything that we do. God has put a vision in you. See it, write it down, share it with others, and ultimately put it into action. Actualize it, and all of it for the glory of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.